I have been using Rodam for close to 10 years now, so my recommendations are based on the assumption that you know how to use a Rodam, you're comfortable using it, you know how to fit it. The pointers I'm giving is specifically for the frame to get the position correctly, the height of it correctly, and to position it such a way that it's not in your field that you need to work. It looks big. The chalice, I mean, that thing is quite quite big, but um, it is flat. So even though it's wide, it's, it's completely, not completely, but it's close to being in a, in non-intrusive. The uh, second thing I need to mention is that I will follow up this video with uh, more beginner's introduction to rubber dam fitment so that uh, you know people who haven't been using rubber dam for, for very long also have something to go from this is the penultimate prototype fitted to a green sheet that looks like it's actually covering half of the sheet and you'd be right uh, but the way i like to do rubber dams and i realize some people like to do it differently is to have the upper edge of the dam clear the nostrils. So the upper edge of the rubber dam must be inferior to the to nostrils of the patient. They do like that better than having that over the nostril. I mean, we don't want to asphyxiate the minor. The dummy that I'm using is not ideal. Uh, it's a, looks like a high school plastic skull and I've done a rubbish rhinoplasty on it. So, um, but just for illustrative purposes, um, you can see the uh, edge of the rubber dam to be positioned lower border of the nose, inferior border, or just there in the um, where the orbicularis oris uh, attached to the nasal process. This will position the chalice, the suction generating device, just level or just below the uh, lower lip and also give you optimum suction. To give the use of a paper, we are currently limited to the amount of rubber dam we are allowed to order. So the first point of reference would be in the middle at the top, about three to four centimeters down. That would give you the position of the central. Now we're doing the first quadrant, so that'd be 1 1, K9, and then we follow the arch. And the arch, you are welcome to think back of that stamp we used to use back in uni where they placed a stamp on it. This looks broadly similar to that stamp. Now for the lower rubber dam, we start also at the point in the vertical middle, 4 to 5 centimeters from the side and I'm illustrating the third quadrant here that would be three seven three six five four three two one thereabouts notice how this is close to be the same opening as a mouth on average so the lower ones basically horizontally something else i need to mention about the tooth numbers i've given you that's the position of the tooth that you're going to clamp All right so if you're going to work on say the three five you can use the three seven as your position but then you don't clamp along this line if you're going to work on this tooth it will shift the rubber dam way off so if you're going to work on say the three five what I like to do, and I'll discuss these um, punching patterns in a different video, but I do like my split dam technique. So I'll punch uh, 3 5 there and then just cut along those lines. Uh, if you want to have individual exposures, you don't have to cut and you can just you know, dot them along the line. So important is that. What you see in the lower arch that's the start of your punching pattern and for the rest of the teeth you have to take it forward 
along the arch like that so it's beneficial for this thing to work if you have a nice and deep bowl there so it's beneficial for you to go as far back as possible anchor there with the clamp and then work on say the 3-4 even the 3-3 three, three, um, as far distal as you can and then isolate the whole arch because that 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 ball will act as a weir and the turbulences created in there will hopefully cause uh, an area of lower pressure so that it disappears into the chalice um, and you can, if you want to see the difference between the first and the penultimate open prototype there this is way too crude and this skull like i said is not ideal so the position of the rubber dam on the skull is completely wrong it will never work but it's worth a mention at this point that well first of all don't put your thumb in the eye socket but second of all the um fitment of the clamp first and then fit the rubber dam over the clamp is what i prefer purely because uh, i think it's safer um, there's horror stories out there of people treating the wrong tooth when they do the fitment of the clamp to the sheet first as you can see there doesn't really work on this skull bad position however that's better with the real chin and lips the position is a lot better the clamping i've done here i think it was on the upper first bowler and you can see how it's landed just below the nose like that and then you'll have your top of your frame maybe just a wee bit above the tip of the nose if you've set up everything and you see oh my word it's still up there what i usually do is just take a scissor and cut a little scallop there to clear the nose so well, that's basically the level for it this is a dental model resin i received it this morning uh, there's a difference between this one and the one that uh, will be printed and the difference is we had to thicken it up there to add strength so I added a little plate and I printed a little disclaimer, disclaimer on it as well. Uh, another thing that I think is key to it working is a flat chalice like that. If you're going to attach a normal plastic cup to a high volume suction uh, tube and if you hold your hand in front of it you'll hardly feel any suction and that's because the increase in volume is very sudden this is a lot smaller than that first of all second of all it's flatter so hopefully it will create a nice fan shaped graft into it and also the internal shape um, in there would um, hopefully create a nice venturi effect too to, to, to generate efficient airflow. Adjusting will be necessary sometimes. Uh, no, not all situations are the same, but adjusting not too hard. You just let go of the top and pull it tighter at the bottom if you want to shift it up, and obviously the reverse when you want to shift it down the movement there is possible it's not big though so if you if you find yourself constantly getting it like that or getting it like that uh, you should just refer back to where your original um, position of your distal most tooth was punched and just tweak that up a little bit it's not going to go in and work perfectly the first time like with um your first couple of rubber dams I'm sure might have been a mess I, mine certainly was and um, the key to it would be to learn to adjust so that um, the position again lower lip at the edge of the chalice contributing to its efficiency is if you have a nice little uh, bowl shaped uh, almost like a weir and the draft of air over the mouth would then also create a little vortex so that the aerosol can 
drift up and go to where the air pressure is lower into the suction. Uh, again, as per my introduction video, please distinguish between aerosol and droplets. Water drops or fluid drops that's coming out of the mouth under high velocity is going to splash clear of the suction. Um, it's still up to the operator to work carefully so that these big droplets that splash all over isn't um, generated while we treat. Uh, this is basically just for the aerosol. Another thing would be the color of your frame if you are going to print it in white or look inefficient. But it does work. I mean, you, you saw the black one uh, earlier. A quick word on pipes. Uh, any pipe that is flexible, any pipe that is approved by your local governing authority and with a smooth inner bore will work. You don't want a rough inner or segmented pipe uh, because those slow down the airflow with as uh, short a distance as you can. Not all high volume suction pipes have the same diameter. I've set up the attachment of the frame as well as the uh, connected to the high volume suction uh, inlet uh, to be 10 millimeters. So the, the, the flexible hose inner diameter should be 10 millimeters. If you find your hose doesn't fit over it, just apply a little bit of heat, some warm water, uh, dip it in the water and then fit it. And after a while, the hose would start to take on the shape. Um, vinyl, vinyl hose, translucent vinyl hose. And as always, keep it clean, keep it disinfected or sterilized if you, if you can find a sterilizable hose. Lockdown hairdressing. Um, so for suction, two sources of high volume suction would be ideal. That way you can have your primary high volume close to where the source of the aerosol is. And that would also hopefully catch all the stray droplets. And then a secondary high volume suction to be connected to the frame. Most chairs only have the small and the large suctions. So probably a T piece in your suction hose that goes from the chair to the mouth. So you can just um, come out the side. So um, that might work better than just dedicated the whole of your high volume suction to this device. Inserting a T piece into a suction uh, pipe is something that your technician is going to have to advise on whether or not you have enough suction force for it, as well as if it's actually something that, that can be done. If you do have two separate high volume suction inlets, there are uh, a handful of uh, adapters that are printed uh, or designed to be printed, added to the same file that you can download. Not all of them are the same, and that's why they are uh, various different sizes. Uh, I hope you come right. Uh, it, uh, it's a beta testing type of approach. Uh, for the lack of movement, we are very restricted with what we may may not do. Um, lack of people willing to have me test on them. Um, social distancing and all those things. <clears throat> I couldn't really put this thing through all its paces. But I'm confident in, in, in it working, and I hope it works for you as well. I'm going to leave the comments on. I'm a bit worried about that, but it's got to be done. So if you have comments, preferably constructive criticism, thank you. Um, I, I'll routinely check in on them. And even if you have a suggestion of how I could improve the design, again, I'm limited with the amount of times I can print these, but uh, I'll definitely look into it. Uh, as always, I appreciate your time. Thanks a lot.